In this video, we're going to look at an example of using the compound interest formula. So here I have it written. Now, in different books, in different situations, you'll see different variables to represent these things. And, you know, it doesn't really matter what variable you use. Most people use R for rate. I've used C for the number of compoundings per year and N for the total number of compoundings. And I know that different books and different, I don't know, teachers use two variables up here to find the number of compoundings um, using the number of years as part of the situation. You can adapt as long as you know what each variable stands for. You can figure out how to plug stuff in. Okay, And I have this here because I want you to always remember that this compound interest formula is just an example of exponential growth. And here's our exponential growth formula. This will help you remember the formula for compound interest where A in exponential growth is your initial value. Well, that's the same as your present value or your starting value of how much money you have. B is your growth factor, how much you're growing or decaying by as a multiplier. So with compound interest, we're multiplying by 1 plus your rate over the number of compoundings per year. This is our growth factor. The 1 is the 100% because we're going to maintain 100% of our investment in this type of investment. We're not at risk of losing it. And we're going to add on a certain percentage for every compounding period. Okay? All right, so let's look at this example. Sam's planning to purchase a house in five years for somewhere around 200 grand. That's what he's planning for. And he wants to put 20% down. How much would he need to invest now to have enough for his down payment if he can get 6.3% APR, that's annual percentage rate, compounded monthly? So in this problem, um, we are trying to figure out how much he would have to invest now. That is asking us for, oops, let's use orange, how much he needs to invest now. That's the present value. We don't know that. I mean, we, he doesn't know if he has that money either. We're going to have to figure out the number for him and help him out. So what is the future value that he wants to have? What is the interest rate? What are the number of compoundings per year? What are the total number of compoundings? All right, we're going to figure all these things out, plug them in, and do some algebra. Well, let's start with the future value. We know that he wants to um, buy a house for 200000 but he's not trying to get 200000 He's not paying in cash. He's trying to get enough for his down payment. All right, so his future value, he wants to have 20% of 200000 for his down payment. So 20% of 200000 would be, let's see, 10% would be 20000 So 20% would be $40,000. That's a lot of money. But you have to come up with 20% down to uh, avoid something called private mortgage insurance. It's a whole other ball of wax. But if you can come up with 20% down, that's the best way to do it, although it is a lot of money. So he's going to try to save $40,000 in cash. Good luck, Sam. Hopefully you can do it. Well, we don't know how much he'd have to invest right this second. Let's see. Then we've got 1 plus... R, that's the annual percentage rate. Well, he's going to figure he can get 6.3%. So 0 0.063 divided by the number of compoundings per year. So 6.3% is annual percentage rate, but when he earns that, he's going to earn it every month. So they'll divide that number by 12, and that'll be the rate that he's earning per month. Now, how many months is he going to have to do this? All right, that's N, the total number of compoundings. He's going to do this every month for five years. So N is going to be every month, 12 months for five years. He's going to put this investment away for 60 months. So that's the total number of compoundings. All right, so that's basically it with the formula. So now what we're trying to do is solve this for P. And I really think you should practice this part because students struggle with this, inputting it into their calculator um, and making it come out right. And one of the keys here is you don't want to round as you go along. So let's kind of go through this. Now your calculator, everybody's calculator is a little bit different, so try to make it work for you. So order of operations, um, basically what I want to do is figure out the value of all this. And then I'm going to take 40,000 divided by this. 
So let me write this out. So we're going to end up doing 40,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.063 over 12, that quantity, to the 60th power. And that's going to be our present value. Now, how I would punch this into my calculator really would depend on the type of calculator that I had. So for this little guy, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what is um, 1 plus 0 0.063 divided by 12. And that number is not too bad there. 1.00525. So I have 40,000 divided by uh, 1.00525 to the 60th. Now with this little calculator, if I take this number to the 60th power, I get this big decimal. I don't want to write that down. <laughs> I don't want to round it because I don't want it to mess up my answer. There's probably a way to store it here. I'm not sure. Um, but so what I'm going to do is not write this number down. I'm going to do all this calculation at the same time. My calculator knows the order of operations. So I can go 40,000 divided by 1.00525 to the 60th. And it's showing showing me up here it's going to do this it's going to do the exponent first and then the division so I should be safe without using parentheses so I get 29,215 62 $29,215.62 and that would be the present value that would be what I would have to invest right now in order to come up with $40,000 five years from now. So this money would just sit in there and earn interest and, and it would be worth $40,000 after that amount of time, uh, five years. Now I want to show you if I would have used parentheses, 40,000 divided by the quantity. I could try to punch in the whole thing. Let's do it. No, I'm going to have to use two. So I'll just uh, 1.00, this little calculator, I'm kinda, I don't want to do too much here. 525 um, to the 60th, close the parenthesis, and then hit. Now, when I close the parenthesis, I got the answer to what was inside the parenthesis, so then you have to hit equals. A lot of your calculators are like that to get the final answer. You close the parenthesis, it gives you the value of everything in the parenthesis, then you have to hit equals to finish off the calculation. All right, so that's how you use the compound interest formula and do the algebra and punch it into your calculator in order to find out how much you have to start with when you know how much you want to end up with.